I want to talk about surfaces for a few minutes and then we're done. Okay, so I want to talk about why you need a boundary on a surface. Okay, so in Carlson, you, sh you should draw a 3D polyline around where you want your surface to end. And I'm going to explain why in this video. Okay, so we've got five shots here. Okay, let's say this is a bluff right here. This pink line is a bluff. Okay, so the slope goes down. And it goes down like this. So what you got to remember with these surface... When you run in a surface, it's just running a computer algorithm. Okay? And it's not smart. It's not like a human. It's stupid. I guess some humans are stupid. It's not like you guys. You guys are smarter than the algorithm. Okay, so if we've got these five points here and this is a bluff, okay, I want to explain what happens when you run a surface on this without a boundary. Okay? It's gonna tin it's gonna drop ten lines wherever it can. So it's going to draw a 10 here, 10 face here, it's going to draw a 10 face here, here, and here. Okay, one of those 10 faces is a problem. It's not an accurate representation of the ground surface. Okay, so if we number them, which 10 face isn't an accurate representation of the ground surface? Four. Four is not accurate. Okay, because I want you to think about. Okay, so if this is, let's say this, this is elevation 10, this is flat, it's all elevation 10 here. Okay, and this is elevation 5. Okay, and this is, so we got a 5 foot drop. Okay, but all it knows is that this point's at 10 and then this point's at 10. So what does it assume about all the elevations along this line? They're at 10. They're at 10. But what's our elevation right there? So I don't know, 7.5? You guys see that? So our tin line here is actually two and a half feet above the surface. Okay. So how would you fix this? The software is automatically going to draw this tin line whether you want it or not. Okay. The way you fix it is with a boundary. Okay. So what you do is you come in and you tell your surface, you tell your software, I don't want you to draw any tin lines outside of my boundary. And you draw it and that's the boundary in blue. Now this tin line doesn't get drawn, okay, and that's what you want. Now, if you're out in the field, okay, so this would apply in this example, let's just say we're, we're doing a topo this side up here and we don't care about anything below the bluff, right? So your surface would run along this and that, that would be okay, okay? But if we're in the field and we actually care about what's here, we have to add at least one shot. We need at least a shot right there. Okay? Now it's going to tin like this, and we'll get the contours will wave in here like they're supposed to. Okay? Let me give you another example. Go ahead, Dan. Where's your boundary move? Or how do oh. you, did okay, you so in that case, line? we would move the boundary out. The boundary would come out here. So the reason, I, the reason I'm teaching this is you have to use a boundary when you run a surface, because if you don't, you're going to get tin lines drawn around the edges of your surface that are not accurate. Okay, almost always. Okay, now let me let's show you another example where you need a boundary. And there's two ways to do this. There's the lazy way and the way we probably should do it. Okay, so we've got we're doing a surface and we got a half we got a building. Okay. And so we're gonna come, we're gonna come when we're doing our surface. And we're going to take shots like this in the field. Okay. Now, if you don't take these shots out, it's going to tin across that. Okay. That's not normally what we want to do. Okay. So what you do is you tell your surface, you create a polyline here, and you exclude that from your surface, there's a way to do that across them, then it won't tin across those lines, okay? Because do, do we really know what the ground's doing underneath the house? Now for, all we, for all I know, there's a basement in here, right? So as a general rule, we want to pull that out of the surface. Now, you can do the same thing. Let's just say we're doing a topo. 
we've got a shopping mall. And we're doing a parking lot topo down here. We're topoing the parking lot. But we don't care about what's going on in the building, except for the building face. Okay. Okay, but you, you know, I don't know. Maybe we have to finish floor shot in here. We took some building shots. Okay, you want to put a boundary on that. Okay. Because we don't really know what's going on underneath the building. Okay, now, here's why this is important for the field guys. What happens if you're drafting this and you're trying to run an accurate surface and the guys don't have that shot? Yeah, you either got to fake it in or you end up with a gap between your surface and the building, which is not what we want. So when you're out shooting a surface, that shot's really important. So are these, <laughs> right? All these shots are important. Okay, so you got to think about, you know, here's the other thing you got to think about too, then we're done. Okay, so this is the ground. Do I have brown? Oh. Okay, so here's the ground surface. And then we got our building. Here's a wall of our building. Maybe that's our foundation. Okay. You gotta think about where you take that shot. Right? So if you're out shooting this, you know, you gotta you gotta think about where you take your shot now. As a general rule, I don't know, I'd be curious to hear what Brian and Danny say, but it's hard to get your rod and your prism right up against this building. Right? So I try and be consistent. I, just, I maybe come out here about a half a foot. And that's where I take all my ground shots next to the building a half a foot out. Right? And that's okay as long as there's not a huge amount of elevation change there. Right? But when you're, when you're going around, like that sounds easy until you get a building like this one. I mean, there's a lot of crap going on around this building. If you look, right, there's multiple levels and there's, you know, there's pop-ins for windows and, right? So... Think, you got to think about in your mind, if we're doing a topo, what I want you to think about in your mind is where is the drafter going to want to put the boundary of this surface around the building when you're taking your shots? Okay, We always need those shots. Now, we may ask you guys to come in and do some extra building shots because we want to know about you know how tall the windows are or whatever. Okay, But the main thing is we need, a, we need all the shots we need to run that 3D poly line around the face of the building to get a good surface boundary. Okay, So you got to give that some thought. Okay, and if you're not sure, if you're not sure, take an extra shot or not. Take an extra shot, right? And then like if you were working on a building like this and you get around like the side and you see there's like a little pop in with the window, what well, would be really nice for the drafter? Picture. Yeah, take a picture for the for the drafter. Right? Then they can, you know, if we gotta fake something in, they can figure out where the polyline goes, right? I'm trying to think there was an example. It came up one time. So if you guys ever seen a, a culvert with a head wall, so this is looking down, right? The pipe comes out here, the water comes out, right? That looks simple, but you need about 15 shots to properly define this in a surface, right? You need, you need shots at the corners, okay? And then you need shots at the back, And at the front. And if that's a flow line, you probably need one in the middle. Yep. I mean, that's a lot of shots for just one little head wall on a pipe, right? You guys will get better at that. Okay, but. Okay, and then you gotta be really careful because you gotta come in here and you gotta brake line this properly, right? So this top of this concrete gets a brake line, and then you need a brake line down here at the bottom too. Okay, we'll do some more about brake lines, but I wanted to just go over surface boundaries. Okay, so you can't do a good surface. I shouldn't say can't. It's very hard to do a good surface without a boundary. So the very first thing you should do when you go to run a surface in Carlson is you should draw a 3D polyline around your boundary. Okay? And you got to think about when you're doing that, you can't just connect points. You have to think about what was the actual mapping limits of the job. Okay? Because just as just another quick example. You know, we've got a job, we got a job right now out on uh, 1200 Graphics Drive where the road, the road right away actually does this. There's, it's just a weird shark fin. Okay, so if you're not careful and you don't understand what the mapping limits are, 
and you got a ground shot here and 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 you're drawing your boundary and you're gonna go like this right and you don't want to do that if we didn't really map this right so you got to be aware of what the mapping limits are so really technically when we're running the surface what should we have in front of us the mapping limits Right? We should know what we map in the topo. Right? Because guess what? One bad tin face in a surface could do. Brian, what could it do? It messes up your surface. Yeah, it could cost us a lot of money, potentially. We don't have to worry about that as much because we're not we don't do a bunch of construction here. Right? But it could be like in case you guys understand about boundaries. Yeah. Can I do absolutely one? Point. I get tired of talking. Oh. I don't really. <laughs> but. So rarely are we going to do a surface that only that's only going to have a, a tiny handful of points, right? Yeah, no, exactly. So and these are good as examples, but just as a point, uh, staying on the boundaries. Uh, sometimes boundaries can be a real pain in the butt because you might have a thousand points, or like Dave sent me eleven thousand points from yeah. the golf course. It takes a long time to put a boundary on that. So say, just for fun, maybe Brian has a you have some sort of a dog leg going on, and, and you got thousands of points, and you know you're something like that. And that's map, like, your that's mapping like, area is that's is like kind of like this. literally what Brian had. Yes, because <laughs> they're going right. around the edges of the bushes and stuff. You don't. It's going to take you all day to try and draw a 3D polygon line across all that stuff. So here's a trick. This works in AutoCAD, and I know you can do it in Carlson too. There's a setting in there called maximum triangle length. Uh, yeah. And this is what you do when you create your surface. Mm -hmm. it, the, the algorithm makes your boundary for you. Then you can later add in a different one if you want, right? But what you can do, say these shots, say it's a 25 foot grid. You don't want it drawing tin lines across here because we're not mapping in here, okay? We're mapping this, this area like that. So what you can do, if you have, say it's a 50 foot, did I say 50, 25 foot grid, you can set max triangle length equals 25 feet. And then what it will do, it will not draw, it will not draw the side of a, of a tin yeah. face longer than that. Yep. So it'll automatically suck all this down and draw your boundary where you want it. Instead of drawing stuff, you, you guys have seen it, where it'll draw across and you got all this weird stuff way the heck out here where you don't want it. Is the difference between this command and the shrink wrap the max triangle length that you can put in? So what is the shrink wrap command only now? I don't think I've used that. Does it create a polyline? Yeah, it creates a, a 3D polyline around your boundary. Okay. Like automatically. It creates your boundary for you. Yeah. Yeah, so perfect example. But there's probably there's probably you can prob there's probably a setting for that command that tells you the maximum length of any mm -hmm. segment of that. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, you want to avoid having these extraneous yeah. triangles out here, right? Mm -hmm. And so I I, you, I do this a lot because typically I'm working with millions of points, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to draw that by hand. And so the first the first boundary you get is usually it's got all this crazy stuff. Then I'll go in, change the max triangle length. And I'll massage that a little bit until I get about what I want. Sometimes, so, sometimes you have to do a little editing by hand. So how do, a lot of how do we want the kids to do it here, Brian? What's your? I'm up. We just got to decide. You're absolutely right. What I'm worried about is people will just set that number and then. It is. Surface. It, it is drawing specific. 